Assalamu alaikum. So I wanted to continue with my story about uh, my professional career and what happened after I joined my first company. And the purpose of these videos is to share so that people can understand what what I went through and then they can compare it with what they're going through or what they might want to go through. So as I said in the last video, uh, I joined a company called CGG back in the UK in uh, 1997. I think I said 1996 in the last video, but yeah, it should have been 1997, sorry. And because the job involved potentially going offshore onto uh, oil rigs a lot, um, I had to do a special training course. That was the first thing I did. The first week I spent up in, uh, I can't remember where it was, in the UK somewhere, doing uh, what they call an RGIT, which is um, preparing you for all of the health and safety hazards that exist on, on oil rigs and preparing you for you know using helicopters going on choppers offshore um, for the firefighting there was a firefighting aspect to the course it was very good it was very I really enjoyed it there's there's the famous part where they, they it's called Hewitt H-U-E-T helicopter underwater escape training it's a, they put you in a big swimming pool you wear all of the the safety suit they strap you into a helicopter simulator and then they they rotate it and dunk it un underwater upside down so you're upside down in water like up to your waist and then you have to just follow a procedure it's all about following procedures not panicking and then you come up to the surface and it's, it's a lot of fun so I did that then when I got back um, Ian who was my boss told me right you're going to Mozambique there's a job in Mozambique we've already sent the equipment out there but the problem is we don't have any engineers to go with you so there was a gentleman by the name of Morris Dix who was um, kind of like me now. He'd, he'd left the field years ago and Morris was in the office. He was one of the managers, I think, in, in business development or something like that. And uh, my boss had contacted him and said, Morris, I'm stuck. There's a job. I don't have engineers. Would you please help us out? So Morris hadn't been in the field for years. Uh, so... <laughs> I, I basically, okay fine, you know, that's what I joined up for. Showed up um, at the airport and we flew out to Mozambique, uh, myself and uh, Morris. I think we went through, so yeah, we flew from, uh, from Heathrow and then we were supposed to transit in Zimbabwe, get on another plane and then go to, I think it was Bera, was the name of the, the city in Mozambique but the, the the flight got delayed or cancelled or something so we had to leave the airport in Zimbabwe and stay one night in a hotel and you can imagine I was a young kid like 21 22 years old I'd never been further than France or Spain and all of a sudden I was in Zimbabwe <laughs> with a guy I'd never met before uh, in a completely foreign country and and Zimbabwe was you know it was in the news a lot back then uh, you know Robert Mugabe and um, you know I guess in the in British media he was considered a dictator at that time and well he was always considered a dictator I guess in the British media and I'm not saying that was right uh, or whatever I'm not commenting on that I'm just saying that's what as a kid back then I, I'd heard so I, I was scared anyway we got we stayed one night in a hotel in uh, in Zimbabwe went back to the airport flew to Bera and then when we got to there, it was it was quite a, a barren airport. I remember I had to get a V. I, I had my visa, and you know it was the first time I'd ever had a visa in my passport. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just following Morris, and and uh, it was it <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I didn't think it was fun at the time. I was scared, absolutely petrified. Everything was new, and I didn't I didn't know what to expect. So when we were at the airport in Beira, we had to pick up the equipment or some of the equipment for the job. Now, probably a lot of people here have no idea what seismic, borehole seismic is. Uh, when you do land jobs or jobs on land rigs, the seismic survey requires a seismic source. There's two main types of seismic source. One of them is a, it's called a vibrator, a vibra size unit. It's, it's like a huge truck with a vibrating plate that you can put down um, and there's also the air gun source the air gun source requires a pit to be dug full, filled with water then you you put a pressurized air gun into this um, water pit 
and you trigger it with the acquisition system so that it you know you can measure when it fires and you you can pick up that the reflections or the direct arrivals and the reflections from the subsurface through and from the subsurface on the uh, seismic receiver that's then subsurface a bit complicated I know but you know stay with me so we had this source equipment that we had to pick up from the airport and we waited and we waited and we waited and apparently Ian had arranged for it to be delivered from South Africa or something. He bought, he bought a bunch of um, scuba diving air bottles and some, some airlines and things like that from uh, South Africa and we were waiting for it to come. So uh, we waited in the airport, we waited and eventually we saw this small plane coming out of nowhere. It was a twin prop, mm, came, comes in, lands. And, you know, it was, it was like something out of a James Bond film. I remember. I was just watching this. What, what's happening? What's going on? What are we? What are we receiving here? So we got, we got these bottles and 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 the associated equipment. We met up with our our guy that came from the rig, and then um, we we slung our bags and everything onto this pickup with all the equipment. And the guy said, right now we're going to the rig. I was like, where's the rig? He said, oh, it's about a three hours drive. And um, he was in a pickup. There was, there was three seats in the front and there was like five of us or six of us, I think. And I had to, so I, <laughs> I had to sit in the back uh, of the pickup. I mean, goodness me, this is just a health and safety nightmare, disaster. I mean, anyway, but I was sat in the back of this pickup outside and then it starts to hammer down with rain while I'm sitting there and it was a three hour journey and uh, I mean it was literally through the through the bush it was it was thick bush like uh, you couldn't see anything except for just scrub and and wasteland from right to left front to back uh, like you know African um, kind of bush like the red soil with the you know with the scrub and the you know the kind of dry plants that you see all around you you know something like you'd see on safari and i was thinking i was thinking i hope there aren't like lions or tigers where, where i am here and we drove for three hours and then it got dark it was pitch black and you know the mud came and it was difficult to drive through and i was sat there thinking to myself what am i doing you know what have i what have i joined up for here anyway eventually we arrived at the rig and when we arrived at the rig um what you do is you typically there's two locations in a land uh, rig there's the accommodation and the accommodation is all is almost always put quite a distance away from the rig the reason they do that is because if there, if there are any blowouts or especially like h2s which is hydrogen disulfide which is a very poisonous gas if the, you know that accidentally leaks out god forbid you know you want the uh, uh, accommodation to be as far away from the rig you know as feasible so we went to the accommodation, we put our bags in. Of course, my bag, first time I'd gone anywhere, it was everything was soaking wet, everything. You know, so that was, that was the first lesson I learned. Morris says to me, ah, I should have told you, you should wrap everything up in plastic bags, just in case it rains. It's like, yeah, that would have been useful information to know <laughs> when I was packing my stuff. Anyway, then um, we drove up to the rig, which was quite sketchy because the rig road was, you know, waterlogged and you have to have a 4x4 and someone that knows how to drive a 4x4. We arrived at the rig and the guy was telling us, you know, we're pulling out of the hole with, with, the, with the drill string. You guys are up, you know, you're up any time now. And we didn't even know where our equipment was. And it was pitch black, pouring down with rain. I was already soaked. And uh, so we, we walked around the rig and tried to find where our equipment was. And uh, I never forget... I'll never forget we found our boxes full of like and we're talking like these are scientific instruments they're very precise electronic specially designed pieces of equipment for surface panels and 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 uh you know downhole tools the surface panels are in boxes and the boxes it looked like what they'd done is that the boxes had been shipped to the location in some sort of a lorry and they just tip the back of the lorry like this and let the boxes slide off onto the ground because they were embedded in a huge puddle in the mud. And uh, I, I remember Morris just going, oh my God, please don't tell me the boxes have, 
have ruptured you know or split and the water's in there so we pulled them out we went into the into the they call it the dog house which is where all of the mechanical uh, bits bits and pieces for, for the wine and company we work with uh, you know where they keep all of you know they do their servicing on the rig we pulled the, out the panels and everything and sure enough they were completely waterlogged completely soaked in water we pulled everything out we laid everything out we pulled all the cards out you know and everything was wet soaking wet but luckily it was uh, wet with fresh water not salt water thank goodness but it was it was horrible because we were exhausted from the journey and we were soaking wet and tired and, and we had to get everything ready because we were just about to, to it was our turn to log and um, I remember Morris saying I'm gonna kill Bainesy when I get back you know my boss Ian <laughs> anyway the follow like we, we, we couldn't do anything because you know at that time we were trying to dry the cards out with hair dryers and everything we could find luckily the laptops that were in the system uh, they were okay either we brought them with us or they were they were okay we managed to dry everything out and get it working I have no idea how that we, we managed to do that honestly it was soaked everything was soaking wet the manuals the manuals were soaking wet the cards were soaking wet, like the cards with all the components on them we managed to get it working and um, we managed to do the job so we literally traveled from Zim we only had a night sleep in Zimbabwe we traveled from Zimbabwe all the way to to Beira then to the waited for the for the equipment to come drove to the location tried to get the equipment working all night and then we had to do the survey which took us about um, I don't know 12 hours or something because you, you it's one tool you go down and you do stations which usually it's like about 15 meter intervals from from the bottom of the well all the way up to you know as high as you can go I mean it can I think it was 12, 12 hours or something maybe even a bit more um, so then once you you're done with that you have to pull the tools out you have to process the data I mean, by the time we finished we we would we were awake for 48 hours non-stop and I was a I just come out of university I was I was still like student mode and uh, I was like I'm gonna quit as soon as I get back I can't I can't do this <laughs> then on the way back um, Morris because Morris used to live in South Africa so on the way back we transited through South Africa and we had a, a layover so we went into South Africa and Morris was able to show me around you know I remember buying my very first Leatherman knife and I bought a few gifts for my mum and dad and my sister and, uh, and that was great that was a great experience and also the trip back from the rig was 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 really good fun as well um, kind of winding down and you know just chilling a little bit after the job yeah on the flight back from South Africa to Heathrow I was thinking to myself you know actually that was that was quite exciting I remember when I got back to to, to home because I was still living with my parents at the time I started telling my dad wow this happened and this I was so excited and I realized that you know that was it was an amazing experience that I just had you know it was you couldn't pay to have an experience like that you couldn't it, it's only something you could do through working in a profession like this and uh, yeah I think my dad said to me as well he said you know you you were so excited because of that <laughs> I kind of uh, grounded myself when I was back home spoke to my friends my friends really struggled to understand what I just been through because Nobody goes through anything like that unless they do a similar job to you. That was my first experience in, in, in you know, very, very summarized. Um, next video, I'll talk about the first experience I have when I, when I went offshore and that was in Holland. And that was, uh, that was another, another really interesting experience that I hope, you know, you'll be uh, following to, uh, for me to share with you. Please like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments. Assalamu alaikum.